don't know if you guys saw this the other day, but Oklahoma apparently is going to be giving out to every scholarship football player fifty thousand dollars. I, 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 what? Fifty thousand dollars to every scholarship football player on that roster. How do you compete with that? Let's say you are Kansas, right? How do you compete wow. with that ever? You already have a difficult time enough on the football end of things to compete with the likes of Oklahoma and the Big 12. Now how does that happen? And we've heard coaches such as Nick Saban in particular talk about how this arms race is getting out of control. And Mark Emmert over at the NCAA because they put all their resources and all their efforts into trying to stop it in the Supreme Court and getting batted back like crazy and just went off into the corner and whimpered. They didn't have anything in place. They just said, go. It's a free for all. And if there are coalitions and things that are being put together um, to supplement that, coaches are not supposed to have any say in any of that, but the boosters do, and you can get any player. I was just up at Washington State last weekend uh, calling the spring game, and uh, the new quarterback, Cam Ward, who came from Incarnate Word, uh, apparently the the Cougar Collective, they called it, is what the, the pool of, of NIL money exists, came up with uh, a dealership that, that – Got him a car, uh, a housing property that gave him free room and board, and then apparently fifty thousand dollars in uh, NIL incentives. So, and he's a good one. We have a ninety thousand dollar quarterback at Washington State now in terms of NIL. I'm all for it. I want compensation for these players when their name, image, and likeness is being used. How do we, how do we concern ourselves with it? How do we monitor it, and that's one of the biggest things that Nick Saban uh, had to say around it. And uh, you got to wonder what that's going to look like. Now, before existed, the teams we're talking about, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, those of the world, they still won in the recruiting, recruiting battles because they had the more money anyway within the facility, right? It, it, they're able to spend to go recruit and do more. Now the money's just kind of going outside the facility. And I believe the teams that we're talking about are still going to win those ultimately. Though my one, my one theory on all this is, is there's going to be a point where somebody uh, at Washington State while they're recruiting goes and talks to one of those five-star athletes that could go to Alabama and say, hey, you'd be the, you'd be the big fish in a small pond here. You'd be the only one, the only five-star player that would come to where you'd have to battle with 12 five-star players at Alabama. You'd be the one. You'd have all the opportunities for the NIL money. So maybe it offers an opportunity for a smaller school, a smaller market school, to grab a player that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get that can build that team and build the marketing value of that team. What are your guys' thoughts about where NIL is at, how it's dictating the college college football landscape yeah it's really interesting we've had a bunch of coaches on recently big time coaches too nick saban Lane kiffin um brian kelly uh and it's you know it's great obviously the players deserve it uh they're part of a multi-billion dollar machine that gets kind of froze out of the you know the spoils uh financially from it and so but in, just hearing some of these coaches talk, it is kind of the Wild West. There is no rule and regulation, None. you know. At least the NFL differs from other sports. Well, it differs from Major League Baseball in a sense that there is a salary cap. And then there's a floor. you got to spend a certain amount, and you have to, and you're limited by how much you can spend. And that's why every single year, uh, it's, it's the greatest sport there is. There's so much parity. You really don't know who's going to win uh, year in and year out. Uh, Half the teams don't make the playoffs the following year. You know, it's great. And I think in college football, it's going to go one of two ways. We're either going to have a separate kind of 50 team league, and then they're just going to have this gigantic, cool super league, or we're going to have kind of like the old days where it's, you know, not really, you don't really know who's going to win year in and year out. You maybe have an idea, but now we're in this age. It's like, are we going to have a floor that these schools have to spend? They, obviously, they have huge. Athletic budgets, most of it goes to football and basketball. Or now we're going to have a salary cap, so to speak. And that's really the only way to even it out. If not, we're just going to have you know, the same dozen schools kind of competing for the championship. The thing about that is if you salary cap it within the school, you still have 
endorsement deals that NFL players get outside of that. Like some some NFL players make more in endorsements than they do in salary. Sure, sure, exactly. And that's the NIL aspect of it, right? There's going to be a an Alabama booster that is willing to dish out millions of dollars. Yeah, or Texas or, you know, yeah. whoever. Whatever school's kind of got the deepest, deepest pockets. I don't know how you see it, TJ. It's just one of those things like, Maybe the sport's better off if they just have like a 40 team Super League and then because those are the teams that can afford to compete for the championship. Yeah, yeah I, I have no idea what the an- the correct answer is, but I agree with what you were saying. And it just kind of seems like much like everything else in life, you know, when, when you have that money already and you have the power, the scales are always going to be weighed in your in your favor. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, it's the case we're looking at now. I don't know how you make it fair and balanced in college sports when you have an Alabama, you know, or you had like I had no idea, Ryan, about the fifty thousand dollar per player. So each scholarship player at the beginning of the season or whenever is going to get a check or a deposit in their account for fifty grand. Yeah, that's a first of all, that's amazing. But also, like you said, like. And you probably, what, how many scholarship athletes can, uh, you, at the college nine, level? 90, 90, 90, 90 like 100? Yeah, that's a lot. Like, yeah, that's, that's what's, that's my, so, do the math here. for do, them. Do, do the math here, everybody. Like, well, you man, know, we're, we're better with words than we are with numbers well, I'm going to do, here. I'm going to do. It 90, it's four and a half million. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, 90 and times 50. Yeah, four, four and a half million dollars yeah. a year. By the way, and, and the, the percentage of their athletic budget, that four and a half million is very small for the football yeah. budget. But that, I don't believe, again, the university can pay them in any way. It, this is all outside money that's coming in. Right. It has to be. So right. They're not employees of the university. Right. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.